challenges that Hoyk and the people of Hoyk face. Thank you. Uh, that ends topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on flooding. The Deputy First Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. Deputy First Minister, ten minutes. Presiding officer, since the start of December, Scotland has faced a series of storms, one following quickly on the heels of another. These have brought trem tremendous disruption, particularly through flooding events affecting many communities across much of Scotland. Exceptional is a term that can be overused, but in the context of the last six weeks, it is indeed appropriate. December 2015 and January 2016 saw many records broken. Rainfall was the greatest over the last 100 years of, of available records. Water levels in Newton Stewart, the highest over 53 years, in Inverurie, over 45 years, and the D in Ballater, over 87 years. SEPA recorded over 50 new record level, river levels across Scotland, and in many cases these were exceeded by substantial margins. The scale of the events was exceptional, but so, I believe, was the response to protect our communities. The collective efforts of our responders, working very closely together, were first class. The timing of Storm Frank could not have been worse, with communities and responders planning for the new year, a period of festivity and hope. But for communities like Ballater, which I visited on Hugmanay, and Newton Stewart, visited by the First Minister and the Environment Minister, it was far from festive and hopeful. While seeing a terrible start to the year, they continued to demonstrate a strong community spirit. The Scottish Government Resilience Room was actively engaged in the, in the situation throughout, with frequent ministerial resilience meetings to ensure that all the Scottish Government and its agencies could do was being done to support. We heard first-hand reports from the National Police and Fire Services demonstrating the benefits of the new structures, including getting specialist support such as the water rescue craft quickly from one part of the country to another and providing relief to local teams who had been at the heart of the initial responses. The first class response was greatly aided by the planning and preparations supported by forecasts from the Met Office and SEPA. These allowed preparations to be undertaken and resources stood up in advance of their immediate requirement. Their forward look also allowed good planning to respond to needs ensuring individuals and teams were not strained too heavily in the process. Local authorities were at the heart of the efforts to respond, putting in place immediate defences and, where required, setting up rest centres. It was a concerted effort involving a whole range of functions, flooding, social care as well as, well as emergency response. Their efforts were based on a substantial foundation of preparation, response and recovery, and I want to recognise their achievements in what were very challenging circumstances. Whilst the efforts of local authority staff and emergency responders were critical and deserve recognition, I should also highlight the role played by third sector organisations and communities. None of us will fail to be impressed by the spirit that was endured in many of these communities and the particular example of firefighters who put to one side their own concerns about their own properties as to flood risk eh, to support their local communities. Communities have joined together to deal with both the response and now the recovery, and I pay tribute to all involved in this process. We will review recent events with the aim of learning lessons to help in future emergency responses. This is regular practice following a SCORE activation, with officials and responders reviewing the circumstances of the event to identify lessons learned which are acted upon to, improve it, to provide a continuous improvement regime. Ultimately, the learning identified is captured and utilised to review and improve the delivery of response and recovery actions by statutory organisations, voluntary agencies and central government, and provide the best possible service to our communities, as was seen by the tremendous joint efforts to tackle issues arising from the winter storms. The government has also been quick to respond to the move from response to recovery. On each occasion, we have been quick to activate the Bellwin scheme. It was triggered on 7 December 2015 as a result of Storm Desmond, and on the 30th of December 2015 as a result of Storm Frank and remains active in the aftermath of the latest severe flooding. The Scottish Flood Forum, financially supported by the Scottish Government, has been swift to offer local support and advice. On the 16th of December, I announced as part of the budget statement the allocation of £4 million Barnet consequentials to support those affected by Storm Desmond. Last Thursday evening and Friday morning, we saw some very significant impacts in the northeast of Scotland. 
As these latest communities dealt with the immediate clear-up on Saturday, the First Minister announced a further round of support totalling £12 million. The key elements of this package are as follows. Firstly, providing funding to local authorities to allow them to make payments of £1,500 for households, businesses, charities and community groups affected by flooding. This would be paid from allocations made to local authorities by the Scottish Government. If a local authority don't, did not receive an allocation, they can seek recompense from the Scottish Government to make such a payment, ensuring that any individual in any part of Scotland can receive support if they have been affected by flooding. Secondly, a flat rate grant payment of £3,000 to businesses in any part of Scotland where there is evidence that their ability to trade has been severely impacted by flooding at the beginning of January. The grant will be a one-off payment to offset costs which cannot be covered by existing insurance, for example, clean-up costs, materials and exceptional costs to help the business restore trade, such as marketing and promotion. This will be funded by the Scottish Government in addition to the local authority allocations. Thirdly, the Scottish Government will make available £5 million to assist in reinstating infrastructure that has been lost due to recent flooding. A specific allocation will be made to Aberdeenshire Council to support the reinstatement of the A93 between Ballater and Braemar. The exact sum will be dependent on discussions with the local authority. Further bids from local authorities are now invited. And finally, the Scottish Government will open an agricultural flood bank restoration grant scheme which will be available to the farming community to seek financial support to restore damaged flood banks. The total available will be up to £1 million. Further discussions will take place tomorrow between the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs, Food and the Environment, SEPA and the National Farmers Union of Scotland to discuss how we effectively involve and support the farming community in managing these conditions. The Government has made these announcements as swiftly as possible after the conclusion of the weather events. This ensured that all partners maintained a clear focus on resolving the emergency situations and enabled us to gather a picture of the scale of the events to give clarity about the financial support that could be provided. Today, the Infrastructure Secretary is writing to the United Kingdom Government asking them to make an application as the Member State to the EU Solidarity Fund. The Solidarity Fund was established after the severe flooding in Central Europe in 2002. Payments can be made to help fund oper emergency operations to deal with non-insurable damage such as salvage operations, repair of infrastructure and cleaning. Applications can only be made by Member States. The UK received £162 million, Euros, uh, 162 million Euros after the 2007 floods, but so far has declined to make an application in relation to recent flooding. We are asking that they now do so, as an application may well provide additional and welcome funding to local authorities to deal with the impact of the last few weeks. December 2015 was the wettest on record. Climate change brings the likelihood of even more frequent severe weather events. It is important that we are prepared, and to that purpose in 2009 this Parliament approved the Flood Risk Management Act. Yesterday the Minister for Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform launched our first ever Flood Risk Management Plan and 14 local strategies. These set out investment plans of over £235 million in 42 flood protection schemes protecting over 10,000 properties. This national plan allows us to target investment and coordinate actions which will reduce flood risk. The strategies contain measures such as natural flood risk management where it is appropriate, as well as initiatives such as flood warning and community engagement. It is a culmination of a number of years of work to identify current flood risk. It sets a clear agenda for action over coming months. The strategies have been developed collaboratively. They are not static plans. They will continue to be informed by the work undertaken by SEPA and other bodies overseen by the Cabinet Subcommittee on Climate Change to ensure our approach adequately addresses the latest climate change projections. SEPA provided excellent technical support and advice in informing these plans and worked closely with local plan partnership teams. The public were also engaged before the strategies were finalised. The strategies set the framework for the first six-year planning cycle. In June, the local authority-led partnerships will set out the detailed plan of action, providing additional local detail on delivery between 2016 and 2021. This massive programme demonstrates the seriousness with which this government takes flood risk and the steps we are taking to reduce that risk across Scotland. As a government, we are committed to investing in flood risk management and investment in the future. The recent budget identified the need to maintain future investment in flood protection schemes and protected support for flood warning and forecasting. Recent events have shown the importance of this. 
In conclusion, I want to repeat the Government's appreciation for those involved in the frontline response to protected communities across Scotland from recent severe weather events. We recognise that flood risk management is a long-term priority. We are committed to reducing the risk. We have put in place a framework to deliver improvements, and we are working to ensure that investment continues to be made available to support delivery across the country. Thank you. The Deputy First Minister will now take questions on issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. So it would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question of the DFM would press the request to speak button now. Sarah Boyack. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Deputy First Minister for an advance copy of his statement? I also wish to echo the Minister's comments about the huge effort that there has been to help people through the floods and the immediate aftermath. And I particularly welcome uh, the commitment to a review of the emergency response, but we'd specifically ask that the issue of flooding equipment in communities at risk being available to the Fire and Rescue Service is addressed across the whole country. I do also support the reference in the Deputy First Minister's statement to the suggestion that there is a UK bid to the EU Solidarity Fund. I think that makes a huge amount of sense given the severity of floods that communities have experienced across the country. But I do want to repeat my view that I believe we need a proper formal review going forward. The Deputy First Minister finished by reassuring us that the money needed was there for flood defences and that there were local strategies in place. But surely what the last events of the last fortnight tell us is that the extreme and more unpredictable weather conditions that we are now experiencing will cause devastation to local communities and businesses. And although SEPA estimate the annual cost of flooding to be in the region of £250 million, the cost of the last fortnight are estimated at being over £700 million. So I would like more detail about the £235 million that the, De the Deputy First Minister has referred to and exactly what it will buy. My understanding of the scheme that he's referred to is that they've not all been tendered, so we don't know the final outcome bills for those schemes and whether they will all be affordable. We also need to know the timescales. Um, it's suggested in today's statement that we're not going to have that information until after June this year. Can the, First, can the Deputy First Minister clarify that? And, and importantly, it's clear, having looked at the schemes and having looked at SEPA's flood uh, prevention strategies, that even if all the schemes being suggested were built, there will still be whole communities, many communities, that won't be affected by those flood defences, and that there will be tens of thousands of households that won't be protected. Now, last week, the First Minister I'm sorry, told me Ms. she uh, didn't Boyack, want a long-running... You I'm need not, to I'm not you asking for that. You get one minute that. 30. You're now at 2.11. Apologies, uh, Presiding Officer. Surely we need to look at future flood mitigation and resilience for our communities and infrastructure, and that that's okay. done urgently. Thank you. Uh, Presiding Officer, I, 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 I hear what Sarah Boyack says on these issues, and I welcome what she said in relation to the EU funding uh, point and also on the flood equipment uh, issues being looked at in the light of the experience that we have had. And these are part of the operational reviews that will be undertaken. In relation to the remainder of uh, her, her question, I, I'm at a bit of a loss to understand what she wants the government to do. We, we set out on an orderly process, activated by an Act of Parliament uh, passed in 2009, which required us to produce uh, flood risk management strategies. We have now done that. They have been published. They were launched by the Environment Minister just on Monday, and they cover the length and breadth of the country. They, in some cases, will require us to undertake uh, some investment in flood protection schemes of the type that we are just completing in, uh, in Selkirk, where the Minister was on Monday, uh, or which were completed some years ago in the city of Perth that I represent, and which have proved to be money extremely well spent. In other circumstances, they will be about um, working with nature to uh, utilise the advantages of, of, of nature to uh, be a component part in our flood risk management strategy. And that work has been done, and the government is now focused entirely on implementing those strategies to provide the maximum amount of protection we possibly can do to people in these circumstances. Now, Sarah Boyack is right. There will be instances of um, acute weather intensity which will affect different parts of the country. When I was in Balater on Hugmanay, not one single person said to me, that a flood defence scheme could have protected Balata because the scale of the event was of such a magnitude no design scheme would have managed to do that. 
What there is a requirement to do is to look at catchment areas exactly as the flood risk management strategies do, to identify what cumulative actions can be taken to provide the maximum amount of protection, and that is what the Government is focused on implementing and taking forward. These strategies have been formed by the best available research, and we will continue to update that research, uh, as I indicated in my statement we will do. Finally, in relation to the issue of, um, of funding, uh, the Government has made available £42 million uh, as part of the Local Government Finance Settlement to support flood prevention schemes in Scotland. And that money has been used across a range of different areas. It's been used in the city of Elgin to provide schemes there in Forest. Uh, it's been used in Selkirk. It's been used in Brechin. Uh, indeed, in both Selkirk and Brechin, where the schemes are just half built, they have provided essential protection to the communities involved. Um, that commitment, the commitment of the government to maintain that funding over the duration of the period to 2020, it has been assured by the commitment I have given to local government that they will command 26 per cent of the capital budget available to the government uh, over the period to 2020, which is an extension of the time, uh, the commitment that I previously given to local government. So the resources are there for us to work with local government to introduce the flood risk management strategies that have been carefully prepared in advance of their requirement. Alex Ferguson, up to a minute. Uh, Presiding officer, I'm grateful also to the Deputy First Minister for the copy of his statement, and I would entirely endorse the sentiments he expressed on the professional and voluntary services which rose so wholeheartedly to the occasion in the wake of the recent devastating floods, along with the communities involved. The First Minister's announcement on Saturday was very welcome, although I believe it was a statement that should surely have been made to Parliament before it was made to the media. There are, however, many questions that arise from it uh, and from this statement today. Can the Deputy First Minister confirm that the four million of consequential funding that he announced on the 16th of December will not be made available to local councils till the end of March? And if that is, not, if that is the case, will he fast track it? Will the government work with SEPA to ensure that communities such as Cast Fern in my constituency, that's now been flooded three years in a row and yet is not recognised by SEPA as an area of potential vulnerability? Will he ensure that communities like that are fully taken into account within the flood risk management plan that was announced yesterday, because currently they are not? And finally, as we begin to look at how better to deal with future flooding, will the government undertake to look at prophylactic measures, where appropriate, to slow down the flow of water from our hills and forests before they get into the river system, rather than something that is being increasingly successful in all parts of the UK, and which has proved to be much more economic and efficient uh, than the purely reactive building of barriers in towns and cities once the water is actually in those systems? Deputy First Minister. Um, uh, first of all, uh, can I say that, that I, I'm, I'm, I've seen a bit of traffic over the course of the last two days that um, the... Uh, the money that I announced in December will not be available until March. And I, I suspect that has come from the letter that was issued on the 17th of December to local authorities, which indicated that the money would be paid through the local government settlement as a redetermination and paid out in the last two weeks uh, of March uh, 2016. Now, if this is where the source of this particular um, piece of, uh, well, let me say, poorly analysed information, it doesn't say very much about the knowledge of local government finance determinations. Because on a constant basis, ministers make announcements in this parliament and the statutory allocation of the money, the actual parliamentary approval, might not come until a redetermination order at the end of March. But it doesn't stop local authorities spending the money. So there is no issue, absolutely no issue, about local authorities having to wait until the end of March for their money. I've announced in Parliament the money is coming. If that's not good enough for a local authority, then the whole system of local government finance um, in every other respect, because I've got a list of different other schemes here, whether it's the council tax reduction scheme or the teacher's induction scheme or the free school meals or the looked after children policy or the discretionary housing payment system, all of which were paid out to local authorities by the same means, and it didn't stop local authorities paying out the money. So I don't know what people are thinking about on this particular point. On Mr, um, on Mr. Um, Ferguson's second point, uh, I have a lot of sympathy with his point about the efforts to try to slow down water as it, as it, as, as it uh, comes down the straths. 
Um, I think there's a, a substantial conversation that has to be had, and we're already embarked on that conversation with the agricultural community and with land use interests, about the various components that can play a part to try to retain as much water as possible in the hills before it ends up in uh, coastal communities and in the, the, the river routes through our country. Indeed, if the temperature had been a bit lower, most of the rain that fell in my constituency would still be in the Grampian Hills and the Grampian Mountains and we'd be having a fabulous skiing, skiing season into the bargain, but um, it wasn't thus. Uh, so th there is a substantive discussion. That thinking is implicit in the flood risk management strategies and it will continue to play a part in the discussions that we have with the agricultural and rural interests about how we can best utilise the natural resources of Scotland uh, to provide flooding protection. As members would expect, I have a large number of questions, uh, so can I ask that you keep your question as short as possible. In that way, I will allow everybody who has an interest to get in. Jo McAlpine, followed by Elaine Murray. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, the people of Dumfries and Galloway in my region welcome the FM's announcement of one million for the region in addition to the 700,000 allocated in December. However, the Labour Council in Dumfries and Galloway refused to let people know about the £1,500 grants available to them in December until yesterday, and they still claim they have no money to distribute until March, despite the uh, Def Deputy First Minister's explanation today and the fact that they have considerable reserves and unspent revenue from this year. Do we have a question, please? The Council also uh, claim that the December money is restricted to victims of Storm Desmond, but I can reveal today that victims of Storm Desmond I, in Dumfries failed to told that I'd, there were no grants Ms. McAlpine, available please to sit them down. as late last week. Does Deputy the Deputy First, First Minister, Minister agree with me that... Please sit down. Deputy First Minister... Officer, I, in my answer to Mr Ferguson, I, I went through at length the issues that, I've, uh, that, that have been communicated in this. Uh, I've made an allocation of money. Um, it will be, the statutory force of that will be applied later on in the financial year, but the money is available to be spent and there should be no impediment to be allocated to individuals who require that support. Elaine Murray, followed by Mark MacDonald. Yes, uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I was interested that the Cabinet sec Secretary repeated uh, the, the assertion that council should pay out now. I would suggest, uh, Cabinet Secretary, that instead of asking cash councils to make payments on the basis of an IOU from the Scottish Government, that the, the Scottish Government should make payments as soon as possible to councils to, in order to assist them in assisting hard-pressed households and local businesses. Deputy First Minister. I, I, I really, I, I am at a loss here. Dr Murray is a former... Order. Dr Murray is a former minister of the Scottish Government who knows how local authority finance works. We make commitments every week, every week we pay money to local authorities. Every single week in life a cash payment is made by the government to local authorities. If Dr Murray is trying to say to me that Fries and Galloway Council is so hard pressed they can't find £1,500 this week to pay out to somebody, because they've got no other money available. Local authorities are sitting on £1.8 billion of cash reserves that could be used to support cash management. And they know, and they know fine well, and they know fine well it's not an IOU. They know fine well I have given a commitment and a redetermination that that money will be paid. Now, the First Gallery Council should just pay up to the people that we've allocated to the money and stop finding excuses. Mark MacDonald. Mark MacDonald, followed by Travis Scott. Uh, th thank you, Presiding Officer. Thankfully, many homes in my constituency were spared the impact of the dawn flooding. However, uh, Dice Junior's football club in my constituency have seen their home pitch uh, severely flooded, perimeter fence damaged, and facilities within their clubhouse uh, suffering significant damage as well. While the announcement around uh, cash uh, available uh, to community groups is welcome. I wonder if the Deputy First Minister would advise uh, whether the local football club would fall into such a category and also if he might reflect on what future support might be available for the club given the significant damage that has been caused to their ground to enable them to continue to fulfil fixtures at uh, the earliest possible stage. Deputy First Minister. Uh, President, we have said that the, um, the £1,500 payment can be made to 
uh, an individual to a business to a charity to a community group. Now, I hope that definition is broad enough to take in organisations of the type that Mr Macdonald has raised. Now, of course, um, it, it will be for individual judgments to be applied at local level as to the eligibility that will be uh, set out. But we believe that's a broad enough guidance to give to individual authorities to enable them to determine what uh, so ventures can be supported. As for longer term support, uh, then obviously uh, these organisations have access to a whole range of different provisions that can assist them in ensuring that their grounds can be um, rehabilitated. But what the government is trying to do is to provide um, early cash support that can enable organisations and individuals to get back on their feet after what's been a very serious set of circumstances. Tavis Scott, followed by Bruce Crawford. Thank you very much. Can I thank the uh, Deputy First Minister for his uh, statement? Uh, would he agree to review the Belwyn plan, given the concerns that have been expressed by councils across Scotland, not least in which uh, in his own area? And secondly, uh, when he mentioned the welcome letter to the UK Government with respect to the UK Solidarity Fund, he also said that there had been some previous discussions. Could you tell Parliament what they might have been and what his uh, reading of why the UK Government seems to be so reluctant to apply to that particular fund, given the good it would do to Scotland? Um, I, 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 I'll certainly look at the Belwyn scheme. Uh, I'll be very surprised, very surprised, if there is not a successful Belwyn scheme claim out of uh, the events of the last few weeks, because I should clarify to Parliament, I'll be judging claims not on a Storm um, Desmond basis and then separately a Storm Frank basis. I shall be looking at that entire period uh, which uh, I think is only reasonable in the circumstances uh, to consider the flooding damage that has been done. On the issue of the EU Solidarity Fund, um, as I indicated in my statement, the United Kingdom Government has been a beneficiary of this in the past, in 2007, quite understandably. Um, I think it represents uh, the type of fund for which we contribute on an ongoing basis as part of the uh, financial contributions that uh, Member States make to the European Union. And I think it's important that um, on the when we require that support, we make uh, propositions to, 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 to approach that. There would obviously be a benefit also to communities in England because there was severe damage in the north of England, the bargain. And um, I have no um, inside knowledge as to what is in the thinking of the United Kingdom government, but I would encourage them to embark on an application uh, to try to receive some of that support, which would be a benefit to us and to local authorities. Bruce Crawford, followed by Claudia Beamish. Uh, thank you, the second officer. Um, can I ask the Deputy First Minister to confirm that I have already had discussions with him about flooding that has taken place in the city of Stirling, Aberfoyle, Callender and wider Stirling area in the past couple of weeks? Uh, does the Deputy First Minister agree with me that it is now urgent that people who are affected and who qualify for a grant as householders or business find the money in their accounts as soon as possible? To that end, what positive discussions have taken place with local authorities to ensure that they put in place arrangements necessary to ensure that as many payments of grants as possible can be achieved. Deputy First Minister. We're, we're, we're obviously we're communicating with local authorities about the, the arrangements. Um, there can be, as I've explained already to Parliament, there are no impediments to that money being available and for it to be financed by uh, local authorities. Um, the, the particular circumstances in Stirling, um, the, the properties and businesses that have been affected in Stirling are across quite a, a range of different geographies within the, the, the communities involved. Um, for that reason, I took the decision, uh, because there will be isolated properties in, in local authorities that have not been influenced by uh, the allocations that I've made, uh, to make a, a, a facility available to local authorities who have not got an allocation to make payments and for them to seek recompense from the Scottish Government, so that no individual in any part of Scotland who has been flooded in this recent event and anybody loses out from the process. Claudia Beamish, followed by Dennis Robertson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, will the Deputy First Minister agree to consider further R&D funding for the development of integrated catchment management, recognising, as he does, the link between upland management and downstream flooding to better protect our towns and villages? And will he and colleagues in this context consider increasing SRDP funding to support new initiatives, for instance, for the new Cooperation Fund for Joint Strategy Implementation? Deputy First Minister. Well, Claudia Beamish will be familiar with the fact that there, there is um, 
uh, provision within the agricultural support scheme to encourage and to motivate uh, a greater use of, uh, well, a greater attention towards this uh, element of our thinking in uh, the approach to agricultural management. And as I said in my statement, the Rural Affairs Secretary will be meeting the National Farmers Union, who have um, expressed their enthusiasm to be participants in what is an important discussion. If I think about the, the area that I represent, if agricultural land had not retained the volume of water that it retained, then there would have been much more significant uh, implications for urban communities. And I am profoundly grateful to the farming community for the way in which that was handled. In relation to the research question, um, uh, uh, Mr Lockhead will, of course, be uh, has a regular dialogue with the research institutes who are active on this question, and I am sure that the points that Claudia Bemis raises can be reflected in that thinking into the bargain. Dennis Robertson, followed by Louise MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I firstly associate myself with the comments of the Deputy First Minister with regard to the work of the Council's Emergency Services and the Army of Volunteers? The Deputy First Minister visited Ballater and was very much aware of the situation in Ballater and can I welcome the announcement of the monies available for the uh, repair of the road between Ballater and Bramar. My constituency between the Dee and the Don have been affected quite significantly. Can the Deputy First Minister um, put on record a mechanism for people to make uh, applications uh, for compensation and will this be on the Scottish Government website? First, First Minister. I think the most important thing is that there is a, a ready means for individuals to, um, to make themselves known to local authorities to secure that financial support, and we are encouraging local authorities to make that information available to them. Um, clearly, the, 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 the priority is to make sure we can provide that practical assistance to individuals and to provide it in a fashion that um, meets the needs of individuals who have been affected by what is a very serious set of circumstances. Lewis MacDonald, followed by John Lamont. Thank you very much. Further to that, can the Deputy First Minister confirm that the allocation of funding to local authorities will fully fund the £1,500 payment intended for households in the relevant council areas? And will he confirm that there is no expectation or requirement that these payments should be means tested in any way? Deputy First Minister. Uh, on the first point, I would, be, um, I would be staggered if the money that I have allocated does not meet all of the requirements of the £1,500 payment in all local authority areas. Uh, but obviously, if, that, if, if local authorities can provide evidence to me that that is not the case, then I will, of course, consider that evidence. And in relation to the question of means testing, I do not apply to, I, I don't intend to apply any means testing to this process. John Lambert, followed by Rob Gibbon. To, uh, my John questions. Lambert. Hoyk's flood prevention plan has been prioritised as number 16 out of 42 plans in the pipeline for the next five years. Now, SEPA has identified 683 residential properties and 283 businesses at risk of flooding in Hoyk. However, looking at the plan, 15 plans above Hoyk on that list all but two affect a smaller number of properties. Given the scale of the damage caused last month in Hoyk, will the Scottish Government give consideration to give, to give greater, greater priority to the Hoyk flood scheme? Deputy First Minister. As Mr Lambert will appreciate, as, as individual schemes uh, take their course, there are a whole variety of different uh, tests that have to be passed, not least of which is the whole planning process and the design process. So I, I, I would say to him not to, um, not to attach a too much uh, rigidity to the order in which schemes emerge. Uh, there, will be, there is a priority. Uh, to ensure that the funding support is in place to be used uh, to ensure that schemes are taken forward as timidly as possible. And um, I'm, I, I know from the evidence that's been marshalled in relation to the scheme in Hoyk the significance of the benefits of all of that, and I'm sure that will be um, considered as part of the decision-making process. Finally, Rob Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. In Caithness, communities such as Hallkirk and Staxigo near Wick were not considered to be flooding hotspots, but flooded due mainly to excessive surface water. I uh, wonder if the Cabinet Secretary can say that in the medium term, will the rolling flood management plans reassess areas previously considered low risk for investment? And in the short term, will the Scottish Government encourage local authorities to review drainage and culvert maintenance to cope with much heavier surface water flooding? Deputy First Minister. On, on the last point, I think, that the, 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 I think there is a, a lot of substance in what Mr Gibson says. That the, um, one of the biggest issues that has been faced has been the, by the nature of the, particularly the, the last uh, uh, 
element of storm damage has been the enormous volumes of surface water because of a prolonged period of, uh, of heavy rain. Um, that does put enormous pressure on the drainage systems that we have in place, and they may not all be designed to cope with that volume and capacity. Uh, so it is important that around the country, first of all, that these are well maintained because good maintenance regimes can actually help in that process. But then also that we consider where there may be um, areas where improvements to that drainage system may make a significant amount of difference. So I think it's, a, it's an issue for us to take forward at local authority level because the issue of surface water is a particular impediment in the effective flow of water uh, and in the alleviation of some of the difficulties that can be experienced. That ends uh, the statement by the Deputy First Minister. My apologies to the two members I was unable to call. The next item of business is a debate on motion number 15282.